Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Now, last week, my grandson, Jeremy Pearsons, and his lovely wife, Sarah, ministered the Word of God to you on the broadcast. It was powerful teaching on living a legacy and staying connected to the family of faith. Now, they're back on the broadcast for week two of their study. Now, many of you know Jeremy. You say, hey, Jeremy, and he does all the closes and stuff. But let me tell you about this young man. I have learned from him. He's been in the ministry all of his life. His mother and daddy, George and Terry Pearson's pastor EMIC for years and years. Both he and Sarah are anointed ministers of the gospel. It blesses me to hear them teach and preach the word. Hello, we're Jeremy and Sarah Pearsons. We want to welcome you today to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. We're so glad to be back with you again this week. Going to spend some more time together in the Word of God, and I hope you are ready. I hope your heart is open today to what the Lord would say to you. We want to speak to not just you, but to your family. We want to talk to you about what it means to raise a family in and around the Word of God. And speaking of family, I just want to say right here at the top of this broadcast how thankful we are today for my grandparents, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Thank you so much for giving Sarah and I this opportunity to minister to this congregation of your partners all over the world. We're so thankful, so honored to get to open the Word of God and speak into the lives of people watching literally from all over the world. It's, it's amazing, Sarah, to think that there are people from everywhere right now who are who have come together as a partner family with this ministry, those who are not yet partners with this ministry and still are being taught the Word of God. I know many of you who are a lot like me, you grew up on this broadcast. Uh, you listened and watched day after day, just like I did in, in, at home growing up. And so to be here today talking to you is a real thrill and an honor for us. And I want to let you know that as we go through this week, you can stay caught up with us and study right along with us with the notes. All the notes from these broadcasts are available to you online at kcm.org forward slash notes. And again, just get those, follow along with us, do your own little Bible study or something. Use those uh, to reinforce what you're hearing this week on the broadcast, but also use them uh, to pour into the lives of people around you. And the same good things that our good God has done in your life, He will do in the lives of your family, your friends, and in Jesus' name, anybody you come in contact with. Today, I call you a minister. You are equipped to be a minister of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Sarah, let's pray together today and get right into the word. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you today. Thank you so much for opportunity to minister your word to your people by the help of your spirit under your anointing. We look to you. We listen to you. Our hearts are open to you. And we declare that the good work you've begun in us and in this viewing audience all over the world, you are faithful to finish it because you, sir, are the author and the finisher of our Thank faith. You. We give you all the glory and the praise for the good things that you're doing in our lives. Good things, great things, and greater things still to come. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. 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 Well, if you've got your Bible, I want you to go with us today to the book of Galatians chapter 6. We talked all last week on the broadcast about living a legacy, not just leaving a legacy, but living a legacy because the life you live is the legacy that you'll leave. And we've been talking about our families. Uh, Sarah, even though she grew up in the state of Arkansas, I grew up in the state of Texas, there was a lot of similarities about our houses, a lot of differences too, but the, the main things that were the same were the, the love for God, the love for the things of God, the love for His church mm -hmm. and His people. And we really spent a lot of time last week talking about that. And I felt like when we started hitting on that, specifically the church, that there was such a grace and an anointing to minister to people and encouraging you to find the family of faith that you belong in. And like I said, even though there were some differences about your growing up and mine, that was one thing that was the same. We were plugged in yeah. to the family of faith. Amen. 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 And I want to continue on in that this week on the broadcast. Let's just begin here in Galatians chapter 6. You know verse 6. We read it a lot on the BVOV, especially when it's time for the offering on Fridays. But I want to read it to you again right now. 
Just begin in verse six and read several verses here. It says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That's basically just saying, don't give up. Don't draw back. Don't give in. Don't give out. Don't quit. You're not a quitter. Yeah. You're not anointed to quit. You're not gifted to quit. You are not a quitter. And I don't care if you have quit every single thing you've ever started. I'm telling you today, you're not a quitter. Yeah. And whatever you set your hand to do in God, if you'll trust the grace of God on you and in you, it will prosper in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. If we don't quit, mm-hmm. we don't grow weary while doing good. Wasn't there something the Lord had said to you specifically about that a while back? It seemed like it was a couple of years ago. Don't grow weary. I think it was while we were mm. believing God for something big, like don't give in on this thing. Don't quit on it. Yeah. I mean, how many times has he, yeah. say, has he said, don't quit, don't just don't quit. quit, keep walking. Which just means there's opportunity, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's opportunity sometimes daily, sometimes multiple times a day yeah. to quit. But the psalmist said it best. He said, I would have lost heart yeah. If I had not believed to see yeah. the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. See, most people are waiting to see something and they're saying, I'm giving up if I don't see a change. I mean, how many people right now, Sarah, are right on the verge of divorce yeah. saying, unless I see a change in you or unless I see a change in this marriage, unless I see a change in my spouse, yeah. I'm done. I quit. I give up. Yeah. But that's not supposed to be the way you and I live. Yeah. We don't wait f- to see the change to determine whether or not we're going to stay in it. The psalmist said what was sustaining him was believing to see mm-hmm. the goodness of God. Yeah. So I'm encouraging you right now, if there's something, maybe it is your marriage. Maybe it is something on the job or your family and you feel right on the verge of quitting, stop saying, unless I see a change, I quit. Say this instead, I believe Mm -hmm. to see the goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm believing to see the goodness of the Lord in our marriage. I'm believing to see the goodness of the Lord in our family and in our relationships and on the job and in the ministry, believing Mm -hmm. to see the goodness of the Lord. That's something that I wrote down a couple of years ago and, and, and been getting in the habit of saying, even over Sarah and I in our marriage every, every single day, just declaring that she and I love God. Yeah. We love each other. We love our children. Yeah. Our marriage is thriving. It's flourishing. Mm-hmm. We got to get these words in our mouths, right? Yeah. I'm doing all the talking here. Preach to No, us, that, that word here that talks about being weary, it's the same. Um, it, to me, it's the same. Uh, it conveys the same thing as that scripture in Psalms that you were just um, saying about it, this is weariness. And he said, I would have fainted. Yeah. It's those feelings of almost fainting. That's you are right at the end. And some of you may feel like that with your marriages. You may feel like you're right at the end, but that doesn't mean it has to be the end. That's right. And if you just won't quit, and you'll just keep walking, keep believing, keep standing, keep praying over your spouse. It doesn't have to be the end. That's right. And I've seen this over and over in different people's lives and ministry. And um, it's people that were called by God, I was thinking of one couple right now that has just gone through a really hard time this last year. And they just, I told her, I said, don't quit. Don't give up on it. God has a plan for this marriage. He's called you. I see how you're anointed. You're called together. Don't give up. And you know, actually Christian people were telling them to quit and that it was impossible, an mm-hmm. impossible situation. I told her it's not impossible. And this, this situation, you guys are going to come through and you just, you know, you just keep building people up until they get through it. But I'm telling you, they stuck with it. She kept praying for her husband. And they came through it. And just the other day, this has been just a year or so. She called me and texted me. She said, our marriage is the best it's ever been in our lives. thank you, Lord. And you know what happened? She just didn't quit. She kept going. She Mm. just kept praying, kept believing, kept standing. And God was faithful in their marriage. And that's oftentimes people just quit just right before they see their promise, right before they see their miracle. Mm -hmm. So I'm just encouraging 
encouraging you today, don't quit. And if even if you feel weary, even if you feel faint, it doesn't have to be the end. That's right. And you can keep pressing into God. You can keep, you know, you don't even have to put pressure. I, I, I believe this. You don't even have to put pressure on your spouse mm -hmm. to, um, to tell, you don't have to preach at them. You don't have to tell them what to do. You don't even have to try to make them change to be who you want them to be. You can go before God and say, God, I'm trusting you to work in their lives. I'm asking you to speak to them and make it clear. I know Jeremy and I, we've had moments. I remember this one particular time we were arguing in the bathroom about something. Oh yeah, we were arguing. It <laughs> happens once in a while. And I remember I, I just wanted to tell him what to do or just to, to say, why don't you just do this? And the Lord just checked me. The Holy Spirit just said, no, just stop. Just go pray about that. And so I just stopped and I said, Lord, I ask you to deal with Jeremy. Hmm. I ask you just to go and speak to him and show him. You know I'm sitting just, right here, right? I know. <laughs> I'm just telling them. Um, and I said, I ask you just to speak to him and show him how this bothers me or this isn't right. Show him this in the word. And of course, you know, on the other side of that, I also have to go before the Lord and say, Lord, I repent. This is my bad. I am I am taking responsibility for this. But I prayed over him. I kid you not, like 30 seconds later, he walks into the bathroom and he's like, Sarah, I'm sorry. That was wrong. I did this wrong and this wrong. And I shouldn't have treated you like this. Or I should have done this. And I, he walked back, I, I back out of the room and I thought, prayer works. <laughs> it works. It really works. But, you know, instead of preaching at your spouse, you can just go before the Lord and go in your prayer closet or wherever you go to pray, have your scriptures for them, pick out your scriptures and believe God that they begin to act the way you want them to act. <laughs> that they begin to just, um, change into the person that you see that they're supposed to be in the word or what God's called them to be or to do. You don't always have to make it between you and your spouse. It can That's be right. between you and God <clears throat> and, and God. Is <laughs> and then I want you to notice here the, the terminology he used. He said, we'll reap if we don't lose heart. Yeah. And that's exactly what the psalmist said. One translation says, I would have fainted. Another one says, I would have lost heart. Mm -hmm. And the truth is you can lose a lot of things yeah. in this life, a lot of natural things. You can, you can lose a lot of different things and still be in the fight. You know what I mean by that? You can, you can, you can lose some money and still be in the fight. You know? You can, you can lose some natural material things and yet still be in this fight of faith and not giving up. The only thing you can't lose is heart mm -hmm. because once you've lost heart, you're out. Yeah. If you've still got heart, and that's why you can ask any, any good coach, any sport, any team, and you say, what do you want, coach? A lot of talent or a lot of heart? And he say, give me heart every time somebody who's not going to give up when it gets hard or when you get behind or when you're down, somebody who's going to stay in it. And, and when you're praying, I don't know how we got on to marriages today, but <laughs> when you're praying over your spouse like that, they're making a heart connection there. Yeah. You're, getting, you're getting it out of the realm of what seems to be naturally mm -hmm. between the two of you. Yeah. And you're making a heart connection. You're putting heart in this thing. Yeah. This isn't at all where I thought we were headed. But this is important because of what he says in verse 10. And this is where I want us to get to today. He says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all. Now, you know that as believers, uh, as Christian people, a big part of our assignment while we're here on this earth is to do good to people, is to do good to the world around us and, and to be a light, if you will, to, to be quick to give and quick to forgive and, and, and quick to be a blessing to other people. You know, we ought to be the ones that the world around us can count on to be stable, to yeah. be consistent, to, to, to be available, mm -hmm. to help people when they need it. And I think people in the church know we're supposed to be that. Even people outside of the church know that the church is supposed to be that. But this scripture doesn't just talk about doing good just to everybody. He does say that, let's do good to all. But now I want you to notice this next phrase, especially or most importantly, or you could even use the word as a priority, 
Let's do good to those who are of the household of faith. Mm -hmm. So our assignment or obligation, if you will, is not just to not just to be good to all of humanity, but to especially to those who are of the household of faith. And what I want to do here is draw your attention to the fact that there are two different households. Yeah. There are two different families mm -hmm. in this world. And it has really bothered me more lately, I think, than ever before when I hear people use the phrase or the expression, we're all just children of God. We're all just children of God, the creator. Mm -hmm. And something's bothered me about that. On one level, it sounds good, you know, to say we're all just children of God. But the truth is, you're not a child of God until he's your father. Mm -hmm. That's what makes him, that's what makes you his child. He's your father. And to for him to be your father, Jesus has to be your savior, your Lord, and your brother. Yeah. There are two different households in this earth. And God is not everybody's father. He is a father to those that call him father. Yeah. To those that call on him in faith. And we are of the household of faith. Mm -hmm. Read that quote again if you've got it yeah. handy from E.W. Kenyon and what he said about Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. It is a family of father and his children. Yeah. That's what we are. We're mm -hmm. not a religion. Mm -hmm. And I've heard my grandfather say this for decades. He said, a re Christianity is not a religion. A religion has been made out of it. Yeah. But it's not a religion. Yeah. It is a father and his family. Yeah. And that's what this word household means. When you look it up in the Greek, it literally translates to family. We are a family of faith. Yeah. Now you could read that verse and many people do and apply it one of a couple of ways. You could take that household of faith to be a reference to the global body of Christ. Those who, those who would acknowledge that there is one true God, that Jesus is his son. He lived and died and rose again. And, and I put faith in that. And uh, I'm a part of God's family. And sure, that is absolutely true. But I hear this in maybe a slightly different way. People who aren't just born again by faith, but who choose to live by that same faith that they're born again by. That to me is a different, different oh, yeah. thing altogether. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who've been born again and they thank God have had that salvation experience, if you will. But it's another thing entirely to take that same principle of faith and that same miraculous power that you were born again by, and then to apply that to your life every single day. Yeah. That's different, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. am I right about that? Yeah, that's absolutely. a different way of living. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want us to spend our time talking about uh, all this week on this, these broadcasts, talking about what it means to be in the household of faith, yeah. in the family of faith, because there is a difference. Yeah. And I think sometimes people don't want to feel different, don't like feeling different. And that goes all the way to back to being a kid and experiencing that, they called it peer pressure, that pressure to blend in, mm -hmm. that pressure to look like everybody else, sound like everybody else, talk like everybody else, live like everybody else. And whatever the crowd was doing, you're doing that. But you need to understand and you need to be okay with this fact right here. And there, it, that is that there is supposed to be a difference. There's supposed to be a difference between you and everybody else on this planet. There's supposed to be a difference in the way you live, the way you talk, the way you walk. And Paul wrote about it in, I, what was it? I think first Thessalonians, uh, was it chapter yeah, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he said in verse 5, well, verse 4, you brethren, okay, so there's family again, mm -hmm. right, brothers? You're not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You're sons of the light, sons of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. He's saying the difference between us is supposed to be night and day, yeah. dark and light. Yeah. People use that, ex that expression to describe things that are different. So that's a night and day mm -hmm. difference. Well, 
That's the kind of difference there's supposed to be between this family and the other family that's out in the world. The difference between the household of faith and the household built on fear. Mm -hmm. There is supposed to be a night and day difference. Nobody walks outside at 12 o'clock noon, looks up in the sky at that big ball of fire hanging out up there and saying, I wonder if it's day or night out here. You don't have to wonder. Look, there's proof. The light is the proof. And that's supposed to be the same thing going on in us. Mm -hmm. So that's what Sarah and I want to deal with on these broadcasts all this week, this night and day difference. What distinguishes us in the house of faith as opposed to anybody outside this house? Mm -hmm. And and I know you have a lot to say about it. I feel like I'm the one doing all the preaching here. Oh, I'm enjoying it. Are you? (laughs) Can can I receive an offering at the end of this? I will give you all my money. Okay, thank you. I don't have anything in my pockets. Okay, maybe later. But uh, I'm telling you, the, the Lord has drawn a line in our own hearts and helped us more, especially over the last several weeks, months, uh, identify what it means to not just be in this house, this house of faith, but to raise a family in this house. And that, that phrase came to us. It was Sometime last year, we were doing broadcasts of our own for our ministry, raising a family in the house of faith. But when you and I went away up to Colorado into the mountains to pray for a few days, this was what, back in November of 2018, that phrase is what kept coming to us over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And it was while we were praying about this next step of ministry that we're taking this year in the launch of our own church. Legacy Church is coming later this year and we'll be launching in Colorado, just outside Colorado Springs. And the whole heartbeat of the church is is this idea of legacy. Mm -hmm. What do you what have you been given from the generations that have gone before you and what will you give to the generations that are coming? Mm. And for us, what we've been given is this spirit of faith. Yeah. And that's what we're determined to pass to the generation that's coming after us and to help other families that would come be a part of this local church with a global call to help them learn what it literally means to raise your family in this kind of environment when the Word of God is first place. So we're going to talk about all of these things and more this week. And I want you to get ready for it because I believe that what we're going to deal with could have a huge impact on you, on your family, on this generation and on the generations to come. We are of the household of faith. That makes us different and there's supposed to be a difference. Sarah and I are out of time on this broadcast right now, but don't go anywhere. She and I will be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.